Good day. So my name is JD and I will be your lecturer for the Field Study 1. Field Study 1 is a very practical course. It is encouraged that uh, you as pre-service teachers who are currently taking the Field Study must have enough or sufficient knowledge on professional education courses such as curriculum development, uh, child and adolescent, development of learners, classroom management because the field study is actually a very practical course since it is an engagement of pre-service teachers to the teaching world, the teaching and learning life, especially to the life of the teachers inside and outside the classroom. So I divided the lecture into 16 episodes. So we will be discussing field study on 16 episodes, but this will just, just be a brief discussions on several concepts because prior to taking field study, have, you, should have been, you should have taken the professional education courses that are required prior to taking this course. So let's jump right into it. First is the uh, first four episodes that we will be discussing is the school and the environment is for episode one. Episode two is the learner's diversity, focusing on the developments of the learners. And then episode three is learner diversity, focusing on the learner's focus. And episode four is learner diversity, focusing on community and their home. Let's jump to episode one. Field study one. Episode 1, the school and the environment. So physical environment is actually very important you know, if you are taking um, an education program. Uh, studying in a teaching teacher education institute, dapat nararanasan at nararamdaman din ng mga pre-service teachers like you who are listening right now, yung mga dapat nararanasan ng mga uh, students because that's what you want them to feel. So first is that the physical environment of the school must be conducive for the learning. Um, conducive for learning. Of course, it must be conducive for learners in many aspects, considering the different facilities of the school. And the next is that uh, the physical environment should keep the school safe, clean, orderly, and free from distractions. And then maintain facilities that provide challenging activities. Okay, so the school have to have a security in order to protect the students. And the school zone is not a military zone. Therefore, any armed uh, people cannot enter the school. Because again, schools promote peace. And of course, cleanliness, several um, utility man has to be assigned in every school to clean. And then it must be free from distractions as well. And then, of course, it has to maintain a facilities that provide challenging activities by providing a weekly or, let's say, a monthly activity for the students to engage them in different aspects of learning. Because, after all, in the 21st century learning, we are not training our students to have jobs. We are training our students for them to create their own job. And then lastly is address physical, social, psychological, and instructional needs of the students because that's the purpose of the school. The purpose of academic institutions has to allow the learners to think, but of course to develop the physical, to aid the physical development of the learner, social development of the learner, and psychological needs of the students. So. The school's visual environment must be ha, must have four elements. First is decorative. We are not talking about extravagant decorations. We are talking about decorations that are appropriate to the school. Next is motivational. As I've mentioned, a school environment must be or must be conducive for learning and conducive for learners as well. And it has to be motivational having uh, several corners for the students. Um, let's say a library. The library of the students must be conducive for learning and it must have a focus on, this, uh, on a group discussions. Like um, there are already institutions in the Philippines and abroad that fosters group 
uh, groupings or uh, uh, a grouping corner for the learners to learn in the library section. And it is really motivational to learn with your friends no? and to learn with them and grow with them. Next is informational. Of course, a school must have bulletin boards. It has to present in these each bulletin boards the uh, vision, mission, goals, and objectives of the school because that is the, the root of the backbone of the school. That's where the curriculum is uh, rooted on that uh, philosophy. So it must be informational. It should contain a bulletin board, must contain necessary information, primary the VMGO, vision, mission, and goals and objectives of the school. Uh, the management should also be there. And it also has to have information pertinent to the institution, like uh, if the university was able to do benchmarking to other universities and collaborations with other universities, and several information uh, and several information regarding the faculty members that are necessary to be posted, like who are the faculty members of the of of each department, and then uh, the school visual environment must also be instructional, something that is. Uh, informative and something that can help the learners learn easier. So th those are the physical environments that are necessary. But apart from that, classroom environment should also be conducive in general with considering the lighting that must be appropriate, the temperature must be appropriate, the location, and but that will depend on the nature of the subject and the teacher's philosophy as well. And then when we talk about when we talk about uh, school environment, bulletin boards has to be present. Okay, so the bulletin boards must be powerful in communicating information about learning environment, and um, it must help in building establishing the school culture. Every academic institutions, higher education institutions, or basic education institution has their culture. And I actually encourage teachers no, to develop this culture, to participate in this culture, but not just any culture, culture of excellence, culture of learning and teaching and learning, especially for pre-service teachers like you who are listening right now, you should foster uh, good cultures sa school ninyo. And of course, bulletin board must show vision, mission, and goals, philosophies that schools upholds okay so elements of the bulletin board so for the elements of the bulletin board it must have an effective communication and it must have uh, activeness it's, it must be interactive it must have balance when it comes to to putting designs and also balance when you talk about colors unity uh, having a thematic color of bulletin boards across the institution and across the hallways must be similar, like having the logo, the VMGO in every bulletin board is making the bulletin board unified. But there are significant differences in every department as well. Interactivity, it must be interactive wherein uh, there are bulletin boards that are open for responses of the students. Legibility, meaning that it could be read, it could be easily understood by the people who are reading it, especially those who are visiting the university and even for the people no, who are already at the university. Correctness, it must have pertinent information, important and uh, correct information placed in the bulletin board because it, we do not want to uh, give false information about the school. And of course, durability because from time to time, you, you really have to update the bulletin boards uh, present at school, but uh, it must be durable also because uh, sometimes other students will tend to poke on the uh, bulletin boards and tendencies are there's a possibility to be get it destroyed. Okay, so for the school environment, I would recommend an activity for you to navigate your school, take a look at your schools, uh, check 
all the facilities when you talk about the um, the school in general, the uh, principal's office, the registrar, the lobby of the school, the classrooms, the gymnasium, the open grounds, the cafeteria, the comfort room. Those are important locations that should be considered a, for, for learning, okay? Because we want to feel, make our students feel that the school is their second home. After all, diba? the school is the second home of the student. So that's it for the episode one. Stay tuned for the episode number two. Thank you and God be with you.